Hey everyone, so it's finally time to get my workstation assembled and hopefully turned on for the first time. In the first video I did a small modification to my SL600M so that it could fit four Noctua 200mm case fans and in the last video you saw me install most of the components onto the motherboard. It's now time for the final assembly. I've had a few people suggest that I should have waited for 3rd gen Threadripper or the 3950X which have both since been released. To answer that, I'll just say that the 3900X was entirely over my budget when I bought it, and it was only bought as an investment into the channel so that I could make these workstation build videos. I don't actually realistically make enough videos for the quicker rendering of a more expensive CPU to pay for itself in time before the next upgrade comes along. So I think that the 3900X was the right choice for now and does allow me greater room for more content on future upgrades. For example, I could jump up from this 3rd gen 12 core to a 4th gen 16 core later this year, who knows? With the board installed, you can see the build is starting to come together at long last. I'm actually really liking the colours in this system, and with Noxia moving full steam ahead with the black variants of their products, this might actually be the last new build I do to feature these tones, which is kind of sad, but I do therefore like that this build, with its giant fans, is like a good last hurrah. So I'm normally really lazy when it comes to the front IO cables, but I've decided to plug them all in this time, two of which I already have, as I like to run the little cables under the motherboard. Although may I say that the USB 3.0 cable is the most annoying connector invented since 4-pin Molex. Now it's time to introduce another component, the GPU. I've gone with the most powerful GPU that I own outside of the 2080 Ti that's in my gaming PC, the NVIDIA RTX 2070 Super. If this was a game PC, I probably wouldn't pair a 2070 Super with a Ryzen 9 3900X, as it's probably possible to combine a 2080 Super with an 8-core Ryzen chip for similar money and get more frames per second. But in a workstation, and for my CPU-heavy use case, I think this is a pretty good matchup. Some of my comments have suggested that the moment I install a GPU, I'm going to block the vertical wind tunnel airflow that this case tries to achieve. And whilst that's true, I don't think it'll be as bad as people think. The SL600M's entire PCIe section can be rotated, which of course I will be doing for this build. I'm going to be using a Fantex 300mm riser cable for the GPU, but unfortunately I haven't managed to get a smaller riser cable for my 10 gigabit network card yet, so that will have to be a future upgrade. And with the 2070 super rotated vertically like this, I should have plenty of airflow in front of and behind the card. I absolutely love the black and silver colour theme of the Founders Edition cards, Although, the green lighting and green super logo are a bit frustrating. The next step of this build is the cables, and for some reason I decided to go for extensions in this build, even though I know that means I'm going to end up with a bit of a nightmare in the back with the cable management. So I've gone with Bitphoenix individually sleeve wires and connectors, and I have grey and black cables all in 40cm lengths, and I have connectors for my 24-pin, 8-pin EPS, 8-pin PCIe, and 6-pin PCIe cables. Honestly, I was a little worried about using these, as I attempted to use cable mod cables a few years back and actually ended up breaking a few of the ends and just making a complete mess of it, so don't worry, I made sure to get plenty of spares here just in case. So I did the first few off camera just so that it was easier for me to see what I was doing, and it turns out they're actually really easy. And I'm definitely more confident now when it comes to power supply cables. I mean, I'm still yet to try sleeving my own wires, but using these pre made ones is really straightforward. All you have to do is put the appropriate pins into the correct ends, because one side is male and one side is female. Bitphoenix have become my go-to brand for cables, but one area where they are falling behind the competition is their cable combs. Given that I have the connectors off, I would really like to have used the metal combs so that your cables actually run through, as I think that looks better, but the rubber ones Bitphoenix sell do do the job. I spent a bit of time slowly shaping these cables to make the curves needed for the build. So getting these installed into the build, I think they look great, and really match the theme of the system. So we're getting on to the final touches now. Next is this power supply cover panel thingy. <laughs> Unfortunately, it seems like it doesn't quite sit right anymore, thanks to the Noctua fans in the floor being slightly thicker than the 200mm fans that Cooler Master provided, by 5cm. So the top screw holes no longer quite match up, but it's okay as I found these super thin screws that will do the job and keep the panel in place. With the bottom screw holes, whilst the right one is fine, 
The left one is now blocked by the fan frame, so I'm just going to stick a bit of vinyl over that so you can't see it. <laughs> Not my finest work, but it does the job. <laughs> and then lighting. I like the flexibility of RGB lighting, so I decided on Bitfinex Alchemy 3.0 addressable RGB lighting strips. Personally, I like to have a manual switch wire to the back of the case for case lighting, rather than relying on software. My goal with case lighting is to have even lighting across the hardware, but not to be able to see the LEDs themselves, unless that's intentional with the build's theme. This case makes hiding the strips a bit challenging, but I think I've managed to do a good enough job. Unfortunately, the controller doesn't do a decent static white, which is what I'd hope to use most of the time. The closest I can get is this sort of UV purpley looking colour, with the preset colour options. I know that this was a risk when I picked these strips though, and it's always best to go with conventional white strips if you want a pure daylight white light. But this was a trade-off that I was willing to make so that I have the ability to rainbow it if I want to in the future, which is something that this kit does really well. Hey, so this is a uh, future editing Lauren here. I just wanted to let you know that I've decided that I need to find another lighting solution. The purple really just dilutes the silvers in the colour theme and I need to swap them for something that can do a proper white. So these Alchemy 3.0 strips will be moved to my other build, Orchid. Um, and if anyone has any good recommendations for a lighting kit that doesn't require software and can be manually switched on and off of a button and doesn't use Molex, please let me know. So back to the video. <laughs> so with the side panels on, the build is finally complete. I've gone with green lighting on the board just to try and tie in the GeForce RTX lighting a little. I have to say that I'm really happy with how this build turned out. Now, I know that you're probably wondering how it performs, and what the temps are like, but in an effort to keep the channel active, I'm actually going to end this here and get this uploaded as it is. Um, but there is so much more for me to test and analyse with this build, like how much quicker does it render versus my old workstation? And there are three different options for the roof panel, so how do those three positions affect temperature? And you know, should I add low noise adapters to the fans? So if you have any questions that you want answered in the next video, let me know in the comments below. But yes, I really hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and you want to see more of my videos. Thank you so, so much to my patrons for making everything possible. And thank you all for watching.